This is Mrs. Winstead, and in this video we're going to explore gravitational force. This is a video for AP Physics 1. Um, gravitational force is really one of the predominant kind of forces that we think about when we draw a force diagram. I always tell you guys the first thing you need to draw is gravity. Um, so we're going to just kind of explore what that force is, where it comes from, and what kinds of things impact that force. So gravitational force is actually a mutual attraction force between any two objects that exist. Anything that has mass has its own gravitational force. Uh, gravitational force is actually the weakest of the fundamental forces. Even the weak nuclear force is stronger than gravitational force. However, um, we notice the force because we happen to be standing on a really large object right now. Um, so we notice gravitational force because we're in close proximity to such a large object. Um, we don't necessarily feel a gravitational force from any of the smaller objects that exist in our world, uh, but we definitely notice the gravitational force of the Earth that we happen to be standing on right now. Um, so this force is only noticeable with considerably large objects, so planets, stars, etc. And actually that helps us to explore what's going on out there in the universe. So it's a pretty useful force to understand. So the idea of gravitational force is governed by the law of universal gravitation. The law of universal gravitation states that any particle in the universe attracts any other particle in the universe with a force that is directly proportional to the product of the masses, so you would multiply the two masses, of the particles, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So that's what this R is. It's the distance between the two objects squared. Um, and then there is a gravitational constant that's applied to this. It is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Um, and it, yes, it has a very strange looking unit. That's actually so that units will cancel correctly when you're doing dimensional analysis. Um, so this is a really small number. If you look at it, um, the gravitational constant is pretty teeny tiny. Um, and so what that means is if these two masses aren't very large, um, or this radius is really, really big between them, um, the amount of force is going to really go down from that. So like the bigger the radius, the smaller the force, uh, the smaller the mass is, the smaller the force. So that's really kind of how that all impacts. When it comes to weight, um, the way we understand weight is that weight is uh, the product of mass times the gravitational acceleration. So m times little g, not big g. Um, if you happen to be, you know, a significant distance from the Earth, uh, then you can take into account this guy here. So, like, if you are uh, going skydiving, if you're heading into orbit, uh, if you're halfway between the Earth and the Moon, um, your weight's going to be a little bit different. You're also going to be in free fall if you're in orbit. So, uh, you're not really going to notice your weight the same way. Um, but weight when you're at a bigger distance is the gravitational constant, which is that number that I saw that we saw on the last page. Um, and then it's the product of the mass of the Earth and the mass of the object uh, divided by the distance between the object and the Earth squared. So like if you put a satellite into orbit, um, figuring out what its weight would be relative to the distance from the Earth, then we have to consider this formula. Uh, for most things that exist here on the surface of the planet, we'll, we use this mass times gravity, but uh, this is for something that is a little bit further out. So Earth's gravitational acceleration, the way we actually found little g is actually by taking uh, big G times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth squared. So really that little g is 9.8 meters per second squared. We round that up to 10 in this particular class, uh, just for kind of ease of use. Um, there we go. It just makes your calculations a little easier. There we go. Um, however, you can use this exact same equation to find the g for other planets, the little g for other planets, by substituting the mass of the planet and the radius of the planet. So, like, if you wanted to find the gravitational acceleration for planet Jupiter, uh, you would just need to know the mass of the planet and then divide that by the radius of the planet squared and you would be able and then multiply by a little g, of course, uh, big G, and then you'd be able to find the acceleration uh, due to gravity because of that. So uh, obviously, you know, the larger the mass of the planet, uh, 
the bigger this G is going to get. Um, if you happen to have a planet that had a really low mass but a really high radius, you'd probably have a really low G, which is kind of weird, um, but probably exists out there in the universe. The universe is a whole weird place, so that's fantastic. So those are just some little pieces to kind of help you understand gravitational force. Um, what we'll mainly work with, and I'll scroll back a bit, is this law of universal gravitation and just how objects affect one another. There was actually a guy named um, Cavendish who, you know, before the internet, when people were still discovering things because they didn't have hours of YouTube to watch, uh, he actually figured out what Big G was because he had like two like I think they were bowling balls in a room and he was kind of watching how they affected each other, which was kind of, kind of fascinating that that's like a real thing that has happened. So um, just to kind of give you a little bit of perspective there. Um, but this is kind of the, the meat of what we'll be working with in this class will be this law of universal gravitation. Um, but you can kind of explore that. We'll have a little simulation where you'll get to do just that. You'll get to explore what gra the universal gravitation law is and what kinds of things affect it. And hopefully that gives you just some perspective on how this wonderful gravity thing works. Have a great day.